The war against wildlife crime continues to dominate the liberations at the ongoing United Nations Environment Assembly. Today's session opened with the launch of the UN Wild for Life campaign that encourages citizens, governments and corporations to pledge to act on wildlife crime. Wild for Life provides a personal way for people to participate in conservation through personifying animals. Taking cognizance of the magnitude of a crime that has so far robbed Kenya of several species of elephants and rhinos, countries agreed to join hands to tackle the menace. African Union Commissioner Roda Tumisime urged countries to explore the option of working together as this will help seal loopholes that poachers have been exploiting. Africa has decided to work together. In, in the strategy which has been developed, we have to look at uh, the coordination of the member states. We have to look at uh, the international community. We have to look at uh, how the countries can work together. To uh, also join with other uh, association uh, from, the, let's say, from uh, China, or Thailand, uh, India, because these three, these three kind of countries are very close to our country. So we also need uh, some kind of uh, help from this country. Wildlife habitats have also been destabilized through encroachment of the parks that have led to conflict with humans, as was witnessed in the past few months when more than two occasions lions escaped from the national park and began to roam in city estates. Some communities in Kenya remain custodians of part of Kenya's wildlife as they live in close proximity to the wildlife corridors. Environment Cabinet Secretary Judy Wahungu pledged to engage these to take part in preserving the animals. During the last five years, the African elephant population has fallen by about 200,000. Only about 400,000 elephants remain in Africa, their survival being greatly threatened daily by the rampant Asian appetite for ivory and rhino horns. When it comes to wildlife in particular, because we know that this is one of the demand destinations, what we are doing is working with China to raise awareness within China that the continued use of ivory and rhino horn destroys our biodiversity. So that awareness campaign is what is really important. What happened here this afternoon is we saw large convening powers at the UN level. And this is now going to be, I think, a very important vehicle for raising that awareness in the demand countries. And that's why I said the only way we can save these iconic species is if we eradicate the demand. Calls to relax the trade ban have gained momentum. Kenya is expected to present its proposal on the total ban on the illegal trade of wildlife at the CITES. To have um, a total do, ban domestic trade in ivory and rhino horn. That is going forward. We also want to see a total ban on the use of, uh, of ivory. So the fight continues. So the next step for us is to get to CITES. And it's at CITES in September and October where we have a number of proposals. We'll see how these are responded to or supported by other countries. Brenda Kiprono reporting for Channel One News.